Welcome to BitBoy Crypto. We can't let anybody else find out who we are. My eyes are up here. I personally would not advise that strategy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bugs Bunny or Tweety Bird? How to make money in crypto. <laughs> oh, you're killing me. Welcome to BitBoy Crypto, where we try to empower you for financial freedom through digital assets. I'm your host, DZ. We come to you uh, sometimes at 11.52 Eastern Standard Time. We're a little bit late today. I know we had some technical difficulties at the of ATB last night. This is unrelated or maybe related. I don't know. Was it related to the... No, this was unrelated. We were supposed to be doing a joint stream this morning with some other people, and we were going to be taking their stream and pushing it through. Uh, it was supposed to be at 11.30, and then at about 11.25, they said, oh, yeah, we're starting at 11.30, but we don't need you guys until noon, and that just kind of threw everything off. So we tried to pivot to do the remote stream, then technical difficulties there, and so here we are live in the studio with uh, DZ TJ. Yeah, yeah a little DZ, uh, the DZ Fresh X and uh, Big Up DZ, and I appreciate all the support I got for the episode last night. Uh, we did have to... We had Richard Hart on, you know, it was a little, uh, it was a dynamic episode. Definitely check that out if you haven't checked it out yet. I tried to be fair. I tried to be impartial. I didn't try to come down too hard. I didn't want to be too soft. It was a balance you got to strike as a host. TJ knows uh, <laughs> hosting a Richard Hart episode, you know, it it'll keep you on your toes. I haven't been nervous in a long time, and I was a little bit nervous. I knew the Hexkin community was going to come out. It was going to come out strong. They were going to. I don't want to say judge. Judge is maybe the wrong word, but they're going to view how I did with a little bit of a with the microscopic lens there. So wanted to uh, make sure I brought the A game. So I appreciate all the support. But uh, yeah, let's uh, let's get into right, let's get right into it. Let's see. Let's uh, definitely check out uh, Bitboy Crypto on the YouTube. But more importantly, I need you to go to the channels button. Hit the channels. We got a couple new things. We got Bitboy Bits, very new channel. Look, only two hundred and twenty eight subs. You could be one of the first 300 subs if you run over there, hit the button, uh, check out if you're on a smart TV, go to the bottom left, hit the little button, hit more actions. Also, I might be a little biased on the NFT update channel. That's where me and Justin Williams put out some really good content. If you've been listening to our calls on that, you've 2X, 3X, 5X your Cardano NFTs. So congratulations if you've uh, joined us on that journey. And always, we have Hit Network, New Money Gang, Hit Music, really great channels. Make sure you check those out. Uh, if we go to the Twitter here, uh, I just passed 20,000, hey. so please help me get higher and higher so we can stop the scammers. Uh, definitely check out Ben. His is up there as well. Uh, ben, over 400,000 on the Instagram, getting up there. He also has his uh, dad jokes for the win, FTW. Check that out. This is where I really have the issues with the scammers. I only have 3,200, so the scammers that come out, they buy 10,000 followers. People look at me, the real DZ, and they see the fake one for 10,000 followers. I have 3,000. Like, oh, that's the real one. You're a fake. You're a fraud. But why is this guy asking me to help trade my crypto? I will never DM you. You know, stop stop replying to these people. You got to stop replying to these people. And check out uh, the TikTok. Uh, 2.7 million followers. Uh, really good content. We got some new uh, people on the team helping out with that. Really great stuff. And as always, you know, check out the deals page. We got some really good things. You know, Market Cypher. Has been all the buzz, uh, you know. We'll just leave it at that. So, you know, if you if you heard about Mike, Marcus Cipher from uh, you know some some stuff on Twitter, you know, this is where you can come check it out, get some good deals. We got good deals for uh, Token Metrics, uh, which is who we were going to try to speak to earlier, but really good team over there. You want to check that out? Ledger, Crypto.com, VPN. I use VPN Unlimited. So, I mean, some of these things, you know, I use. I like Marcus Cipher. I like these products. So, these are products that I can actually say the DZ stamp of approval you know so do your own research you know but take that with uh what you will all right we uh ready to just jump into the market man anything yeah, you want to add got? real quick no just let's hop right in see if uh there's anything interesting going on this all right March. let's there look at it is. i know ben likes to cover the dominance the dominance is above 40 percent we have eth below the halfway mark eth at 20.2 would be halfway right now only at 19.1 so we're over one percent down from that halfway mark Ooh, look at that gas fee. The gas fee is a little high. I'm out here trying to sweep the floor of V2 Pluto Alliance, and I can't even do it because the gas fee is more than what the actual NFTs are. But don't worry, Pluto Alliance. DZ is going to come in with that broom. I'm going to come in with that broom soon. I'm just waiting for the gas to die down. But Bitcoin back up a little bit. Ethereum up almost 5%. We have a above that $42,000 mark, above that $3,200 mark. These are good support levels that I like. Uh, 
you know, obviously it feels a little bit better when we're above those marks rather than below. Binance up almost 10% on BNB. Really good right there. Solana, Cardano. I've been market buying Cardano for the first time in maybe about a year. You know, I jumped in under a dollar. I haven't bought in a very long time. So it feels good to uh, actually be able to use this coin that all the people have been telling me over the past year, oh, it's good. And this is why. And oh, now I actually see good Web3 wallet, you know, integration on some of these websites. So the tech, it's it's a little bit different. I think Richard kind of hit the nail on the head last night. All the Ethereum forks chose this specific language. Cardano chose a different one. So if you're learning a coding language, nine of your friends know Solidity, and then two of them know, say, Plutus, you're probably going to learn Solidity. So the growth has been a little slow with Cardano, but we're finally starting to see a little action. Let's check out the top gainers. Ooh, a rose by any other name would still smell as sweet. Rose up 24%. Polygon. Look at that Polygon pump, TJ. What do you think about that? I'll take it. I like it. That is huge. For someone with a market cap that big to jump 13%, that's like meme coin numbers right there. Uh, we have Near up, Phantom up, uh, Kusama up, and like I already mentioned, uh, BNB dot. So it looks like the stronger projects are pumping the hardest today, Ave. So it's it's money. The smart money is coming in, and the smart money is buying the smart uh, coins right now. I would consider a lot of those smart, safer purchases. So yeah, I think uh, you know I think some of the big money is seeing like I think Maddox on sale. You know I think Ave's on sale. So well, when I see that the the top gains are all solid coins, I take that as a good sign. Yeah, no, that's a that's great advice there. And if you guys remember a couple of days ago when we first had these this big dip. We were looking at some of these projects and we were saying, hey, you look at the ones that got hit the hardest, Matic, Paul, you know, some of was one of them that had a huge dip. If you buy those strong projects on the dip, often they're the ones that recover the strongest. And that's where the opportunities are in markets like this, because we've seen a lot of volatility. I know it seems like we've been at four, the low 40s in Bitcoin forever. But if you can get in all these alts after that drop and then ride that uh, pump back up, there's still a lot of opportunities for making money in these markets. Yeah, so. there's been some I've been doing with my DCA strategy. I have been taking profits. I took a decent amount of profits on our way up to 69. Somewhat accidentally, I had a trip to pay for. I went out to Vegas, made a little content out there. But on the way up, you know, I would take profit. But then I would kind of have 20% set to redeploy when I would see something on sale. So if I cash out 500, I'm looking to redeploy 100 on those really, really red days. So mm -hmm. I'm not redeploying all my capital. You know, I want to keep some gains. But, you know, if it goes down, then you still have 80% of that dry powder, as they like to call it on the sidelines. So yeah. real quick, I do want to look at the top losers. Uh, secret, reason I want to bring this up is you guys, all right, so the Secret Network, they clipped me out saying, oh, I've never heard of Secret. TJ's what Secret? What's the Secret? Boy, y'all guys had a good time saying, how do you not know what this coin does? I learned, you know, I looked into it. So, you know, I, I just want to say secret. Okay. The secret's out. I looked into it. You can stop attacking me. Uh, secret down about 3%, down about 20%. That chain link. I did want to bring up the chain link. I always mention chain link as kind of a meme. DZ likes to buy for chain link. This was my main DCA target for the last few months. So chain link has had a really good run. Of course, you know, I, I, I was going split on chain link and Uniswap. Uniswap didn't perform as well. That's why you want to diversify. You spread out. You don't want to just put all your eggs in one basket. Don't just say this, you know, Floki Doge is the only meme coin that's going to pop. You want to spread the eggs into different baskets. Then that way, you know, this is crypto. You might have one sector pump and one sector just crickets. Or you might have in this one sector, this one thing pumps. And then the rest, of course, if we're talking oracles, it's a chain link or nothing kind of. But, you know, uh, so maybe that's not the best example for uh, that ecosystem. But, yeah, it, it is good to see uh, all the link marines out there. So, Congrats on the people DCAing. There's been some data. It looks like uh, the Link Foundation is kind of, they kind of stopped their selling as well. So, you know, that's, that's why we like the blockchain. But AMP, ICP, CELO, Zcash, you know, and then uh, pretty quickly we're back into the green. So we're not seeing too many coins in the red. So I'm feeling a little bit uh, pretty good about that. Uh, squeeze in some Q&A before we yeah, go to the charts. We'll do some quick Q&A, but I also wanted to mention that was a good comment from Radio Faces. When you're talking about top losers, you have to mention Alabama, and that's a pretty good one. We want to say, you know, go dogs! Congratulations getting that national championship. That's where uh, Ben was last night and yep. still is, so he'll be back in office tomorrow, but got to love it for the dogs. Got to hang out with Aaron Murray while they were doing that, so uh, it's nice seeing championships coming back to Atlanta. We're turning the... Uh, 
the city or turning the city around when it comes yeah. to Atlanta sports. Hopefully, you know, no flights are canceled. He'll be <laughs> back on time. Everything else. Uh, I'll knock out some quick ones. Don't sleep on Uniswap. I do think there is a time for Uniswap to pump. Uh, I'll look on out, uh, Loopering and Immutable. I can't really speak on Loopering as much. Immutable X, I'm pretty bullish on just from my experience with Gods Unchained. Really good at marketplace. And the whole Gary V thing is running on Immutable X. So it's bringing a whole new fresh set of eyeballs on Immutable mm. X. It's down, you know, quite a bit from its high uh, about a month ago. So, you know, uh, to me, that seems like a, a fair layer two uh, spec. I'll, I'll say that. Why are gas fees so high on MetaMask? A lot of times when there is a highly volatile time, you do have, you know, people uh, pulling profits. You know, the whales, they, they don't care about a $100 gas fee. But when they, they do care about losing tens of millions, hundreds of millions. So when you see this whale wallet activity spiking, but no one you know is buying, that's when, you know, that's typically what you're going to see with the high fear index. Now, it won't be like that every time the fear is high, but oftentimes when the fear is high, you and the retail people, yeah, they're they're staying on the sidelines, but the whales, they're in and out and they're they're making a lot of swaps. So the volume hasn't been slowing down for these whale wallets, but, you know, it's, it's the... Retail's kind of, you know, on the sideline. It's it's boring right now to them. And the uh, NFT activity, when that's popping off, that tends to uh, put a big load on the network, which I think is that. Yeah, we just had the free airdrop. So, mm -hmm. you know, we're going to see a little bit of a 24-hour, 48-hour spike. Uh, it is the looks rare yeah. airdrop. I was able to claim $1,100. Uh, full disclosure, I sold half. I'm keeping half. You, you can stake half. I am keeping it for the community, for the for the meme. I do think that it's good that OpenSea has a little competition. Do I use OpenSea for all my NFT stuff on Ethereum? Yeah, I do, but monopolies aren't good. Competition is good. So I, I like mm -hmm. supporting a little bit of competitor. It's not me being down on OpenSea. It's just I like competition. This is crypto. You know, it's open uh, market. So let's let's take advantage of that. Free markets are good for everybody. Yeah, I, I would agree. I would agree. All right. Uh, we're doing the charts. Any more questions? No, let's hit the charts. All right. Well, if they, I will say, though, if you guys want to smash the likes, we've got about 5,000 people in here right now. If you could get that up over two, three, four thousand 4,000 likes, we'd uh, really appreciate it. Let's look at some charts. All right. This is, uh, I think this is one of those uh, patented Parisi uh, lines right here. Uh, Frankie Candles, as we like to call them. This is the Bitcoin chart on the daily if we do have a little bit of a trend line, if we, you know, we continue this out, uh, we have to go all the way down to about around close to 220. So looking at this trend line has been strong for over a year, over about a year, as I just moved it. Sorry, Frankie, don't Command. get mad at me for uh, mo moving your candle there. Command Z, should put I, it back. I did it on purpose. All right, so we see a little bit of a bounce. I, you know, the data that was alarming for me was the fear index last was this high on July 21st. And if we find July 21st, let's see here. Uh, I'm looking for it, but it was essentially within a day or two. Let's see, 28th, 21st. Yeah, so that's the last time the fear was this high. I'm not saying, hey guys, I know for certain it is going to pump, it is going to, you know, jump up. Uh, I'm just saying, typically when the fear is this high, that is a good buying opportunity. You like to buy in the red. You like to buy when fear is high. You don't want to buy in the, you know, at an all-time high, and you know, greed is at its highest. That's typically a recipe for disaster. You know, this is crypto though, so you know, throw throw the TA out with the uh, with the sink sometimes. But you know, I do like uh, the trend reversing here. However, let's look at uh, you know, I'm not going to discount this money flow. This money, this I like to look at the money as a uh, crypto face says. This is low. This is bad. However, you don't really see it that low that often. Now, you know, if we're entering into a bear, bearish uh, zone, yeah, it's going to stay red. It's going to stay red for a long time. But I, I see, you know, I see some reversals. I see some uh, indicators saying, you know, maybe things are going to switch. If we go to a smaller time frame here, let's look at the four hour. Yeah, we're kind of trading sideways. You know, this isn't exactly a bearish uh, pattern right here. Uh, I mean, bullish pattern. This is slightly bearish. But, you know, I do see uh, the momentum look like, I mean, you, you'll see the lines. Are the lines about to come up? I don't want to pull out the, I'll pull out the drawing tool. I'll do it. I'll do it. You know, you, know, you got you got the little, thing, you know, kind of want to bounce up. Will it bounce up? It looks like it will to me. I'm not saying, hey, guys, I know for sure this thing could just crash down and it could crash down hard. However, I'm looking at the trend and I'm kind of liking what I'm seeing. Let me take off. Oh, geez. I, I, I got to. <laughs> this is uh, where I pretend I purposely wanted to switch to the Ethereum chart. So we're going to switch to the Ethereum chart on purpose, not because I'm terrible with uh, uh, the Apple uh, mouse products. Look. I'm not a trading view noob, 
I'm a trading view noob on Apple Mouse. So it's the trackpad. It's yeah. the trackpad. Get that right. Okay. You give me a wheel, you give me a right click button, you give me a left. I'm I'm zooming. I'm moving. I'm 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 bouncing around. I'm a racing. But look, I'm a, look, I'm I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Maybe I'll have to get like an Apple, you know, the new office or something. I don't know. I gotta I gotta learn. All right, uh, one thing about trading view, sometimes you do gotta move that y axis to be able to move the y axis uh, like that. So you know, I, I see a lot of the same things. If Bitcoin dumps, we are going to see the same thing with Ethereum. Looking at this daily, I mean, it's not often you see it enter such an oversold uh, territory. I'm looking at this. It's basically right around this point right here. We didn't, I mean, we kind of bounced with a higher low, but I mean, let's be real. That is, sure, is it a higher low? It looks like by a sandwich. It looks like it is a higher low by one sandwich. So I'm not saying we can't get a lower low, but I am expecting a little bit of a bounce here. Uh, that is, you know, just kind of what the tea leaves are telling me. Uh, again, you know, do your own research, uh, take in as much tea as you can. But again, I'm seeing, I'm seeing some uh, positive signs here. I'm seeing the momentum going in the right direction. So personally, you know, I'm, this isn't a place where I would be selling Ethereum or Bitcoin. This is a place where if you do want to DCA, DCA in, this is an area I do feel comfortable in. Some people are saying Bitcoin's going to 13. Some are saying it's going to 11. I personally don't believe that. I think, you know, we saw it try to get pushed down during the summer. Uh, it really couldn't stay below 30 for that long. You know, it would try to push it down. It'd bounce off 29. You know, they 29 again, 29 again, maybe 28.5, 28.4. But it really didn't want to go below that. I used to think that 39 is the new 29. You know, it could go lower. It could go lower. You know, maybe maybe that's not true. Maybe 29 is the new 29. But I, I just careful when people say this time's different. You know, I, I, I am agreeing. But we are seeing the drawdown become less and less. Richard Hart last night, you know, he kind of doubled down that he does believe 85% is going to be the drawdown. No one really thought we would see a $3,000 Bitcoin, you know, uh, around 2019, late 2019. You said $3,000 Bitcoin. There's no way. That yeah. was an 85%. I think we're going to be trending towards a 80 percent, 75 percent drawdown uh, moving forward. Maybe even less. Uh, any thoughts on that? Yeah, no, I tend to agree. I mean, if we're getting um, diminished pumps, I mean, it makes sense that we'd get diminished uh, retracements, if that makes sense. So, low, lower, you know, less parabolic moves to the upside means, you know, basically stabilization as the market matures. You know, they're not going to yep. have as bullish pushes up you're not going to have as bearish breakdowns but you're going to be somewhere in the middle as time goes on so yeah i tend to think you know like you said 28 very strong number traditional logic you could maybe make a case for retesting previous all-time highs from last cycle around 19 or 20 but going much below that uh it's tough to visualize kind of like you were saying but then again it was also hard to think about 3200 3800 bitcoin outside of uh, you know global pandemic hitting so that's yeah i mean it, but the way i look at it it's like a hundred uh 170 dollars would buy you one percent of a seventeen thousand dollar bitcoin you know uh, an eleven thousand dollar bitcoin a hundred and ten dollars would buy you one percent i just see so many people just like oh my god now is yeah. the time to dca but you know also the miners aren't selling as much as they used to so yeah. you know that that was the main selling pressure that and the whales of course but the part that you can never predict when it comes to bitcoin is the global economic impact yep. on the price yep. so charts can tell us all sorts of things and that was kind of where we were at before and then the pandemic hit and then it all went out the windows yeah so. dz's a little bit older i'm i remember the 07 08 financial crash those who you know were around then you know maybe uh as an adult paying bills seeing the job market seeing what it was like like just do not discount what the global market can do to the Absolutely. crypto market. They, we like to think that it's very separate. It is not separate. It is very, very entwined. But yeah. let's talk a little liquidation time. That's right. $110 million in Bitcoin and ETH liquidated. I think those numbers are low. I think, you know, as more data comes out, more oh, exchanges, yeah. I think that definitely will rise. As Bitcoin drops below 40000 ETH goes under 3000 here. Uh so the futures contracts over that was just over the past half hour of the reasons that Bitcoin pushed below as it went below that level. Definitely people were saying, oh, there's no way, you know, it could go that low. I was talking to, uh, you know, I, I, I could say it. I, I don't think they mind me saying this. Uh, the new money gang. I was talking to one of the members. They put in a, a, like a 5X at 50 and they're like, there's just no way. There's no way. And then boom, you know, it got liquidated out like at that last uh, crash. So 
just be careful. What you think is low leverage might not be low leverage. You know, mm -hmm. two, three X, that's where we uh, really start saying that's low leverage. But we a did, total, or go ahead. Chat did just say we reclaimed 43 on Bitcoin, which is nice to get back above that. If we can, we'll see if we All can All right, let's, uh, let's refresh and see. Okay, it's right around that. I mean, okay, so we got some exchanges saying it. All right, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good. It looks like it's a one. Woo, you saw that it went jump right to 993 as we uh, switched screens there. So a total of 57 million has been liquidated in Bitcoin and 38 million in Ethereum. It's now changing, that was when it was changing hands at 39,821. Congrats if you scooped and got some uh, cheap Bitcoin or opened a nice long there. Uh, Ethereum's trading slightly below that 3,000. I know when I see ETH in the two, if I see a one or a two in the front part of that price, to me, that seems like a pretty good uh, area to jump in at. Of course, a lot of this is from the global macroeconomic news. I was reporting that uh, Goldman Sachs banking giant that uh, announced that the Federal Reserve may raise interest rates 4x instead of 3x, as was announced earlier. Interest rate hike may occur as early as March. Uh, a lot of this is the reversal of quantitative easing. They mm -hmm. don't really say quantitative tightening anymore <laughs> because it's too scary for the markets. So they're devising these elaborate ways of saying it's like, you know, it's a, it's an injection of uh, lessening of asset accumulation. And you're like, what, what, are, what are we saying? You're just kind of throwing out words, uh, word salad here. But yeah, essentially, you know, Goldman Sachs, they have the insiders. You know, these people are the ones, you know, you retire from Goldman Sachs, you retire at the ripe old age of 43. And then, you know, you're kind of like a, a cog in the, in the Fed. And, you know, next thing you know, 10 years later, you know, you're, you're up there in front of the Senate committee. So they have the inside information. If they say it's Forex, you know, maybe it's accurate or maybe it's manipulation. So again, you know, you just got to be careful what you read from these people because there is a lot of uh, noise out there. They they like to uh, obfuscate, you know, the, the real data with a lot of bull crap and, you know, just, just be careful. But I personally think, you know, the money printer does have to stop going burr at some time, but we'll see what the market, the markets are so used to it. I don't really know if uh, they can, they can allow it. So yeah, I don't know. It's, it's going to be interesting here. Let's see. We got the, uh, the GP, GDP oil story here. At, all right, that was it right there. Yeah. So, you know, crypto face said it last night. He is, Oh, you know, he said this off stream. So <laughs> let's just, I, I, I'm sorry, crypto face. You want to keep a secret. He said he likes oil. Yeah. He said he likes oil. What do we have for an article today? Hedge funds flood into oil as threat of Omicron disruption recedes. Oil markets are tracking a new wave of interest from investors at the end of 2021 and the start of 2022 as the threat of widespread economic and aviation disruption from Omicron seemed to recede. Hedge funds and other money managers purchased the equivalent of 31 million barrels in the six most important petroleum-related futures and options contracts in the week to uh, January 4th. So we see here, this chart goes back uh, about two years to January 2020, money managers weekly net position change. So this is, uh, you know, money's flowing in, money's flowing out. And now we're starting to see a little bit of reversal, you know? So, I mean, it's down a little bit. I can't tell if it's just January's in, uh, open interest so far. If that is the case, that is very, very huge because, you know, we're about a third of the way in the month. So that means triple that last candle yeah, that mean that looks like a pretty strong reversal. However, I mean, you see it, uh, well, I mean, it does come down, but, you know, this is a fairly volatile uh, chart right here. So I don't want to, you know, put too much stock into it. Just look at what happened over the summer right here is way down, up, way down, way up, back down, back up. So, but it does seem like this is a clear trend reversal as uh, portfolio managers, they're purchasing a total of 102 in the most three, in the three most recent weeks after selling 300 million barrels in the previous 10 weeks that's where you see it in this downtrend in the most recent week most of the buying came from the creation of new bullish long positions rather than the closure of old bearish short ones that's a really good sentence i've kind of talked about this before where when we see spikes and we say oh this is leverage making this happen you open a long when you close a long that acts as a sell on an order book when you close a short that acts as a buy on an order book. So they're saying this isn't shorts closing. These are people opening fresh long. So that's a slightly more bullish. That's a more, uh, that's more of a green indicator right there. So bullish on oil, the smart money seems to be uh, going into the oil here. The bullish long positions now outnumber the bearish ones by a ratio of uh, basically five to one. So we're seeing, you know, you got, you got 10 people, 
you're gonna, essentially you're gonna have about eight or nine saying yeah this is uh this is i'm i'm long i'm bullish and then you got the one naysayer there's always that naysayer what's up with that naysayer yeah. eh, tether's well, fake and i, I would know, you always got that guy i would say this is consistent as well with a lot of the messaging we've been talking about here with the pandemic mostly easing up here in march which aligns with the the fed backing off the money printer and if people are going to start traveling and moving around on a more organic you know normal type basis obviously there's going to be a bigger demand on oil which puts more buying pressure on it which drive the prices up even though it's very uh fixed pricing when it comes to supply and demand in the oil industry yeah yeah i, I got a uncle he, he worked at exxon and uh he was just telling me i helped him move last summer and he was telling me how battered down his stock was and so over the last 10 years you know he has his like his children are investing in amazon they, they're they a lot of them work in tech two of the three work in tech and they're investing in amazon and microsoft and you know all these other things even more speculative plays and He's just watching his Exxon stock just like over 10 years. So, you know, I mean, you know, on a long term trend, you know, maybe now is a a bullish trend for oil. However, just look, we're used to crypto. Okay. Oil is going to have this 40 percent gain over 12 months. And people are going to be like, oh, my God, oil was, you know, the bee's knees. I told you, you will never get gains like this. You find the right like L2 or L1 mm-hmm. solution or, you know, gaming coin, you're up 100x. So, you know, yeah. just just, you know, uh, it's a safer play. You know, you're not going to lose all your money. Uh, but, you know, just just be uh, it, it'll be interesting to see, like, how right they say they are and what they brag about. Like, oh, we're up 30 percent. You know, like, OK, hey, <laughs> that was that's that's a that's a cute day for a for a meme coin, you know? Yeah. All right. Let's, uh, let's talk some smart contracts on Bitcoin. That's right. Oh. This is for you, you Bitcoin maxis. Here we go. Smart, And I don't mean that as an insult. I, I kind of, let me give an apology to a girl, uh, Miss Team Crypto. I said, you know, you're, you're a Bitcoin maxi. She kind of like pushed back on it. I, I, didn't, I don't mean it any kind of disparaging way. I just mean it as someone, I'm not saying you're one of those people that Bitcoin's good. Everything else is terrible. I mean, it as like Bitcoin's your favorite coin and there's nothing wrong with that. Not my favorite coin, you know, it's probably Ethereum, you know, don't tell Cardano people that, but, you know, I, that's my favorite coin, you know, I wouldn't say it makes me an ETH maxi, I just, we all have our favorite coins and that's okay. There's enough coins for everybody. What's your favorite coin, TJ? Ooh, might be Bitcoin. Might be Bitcoin. <laughs> no, uh, favorite coin, it's, that's so hard. I'm, I'm the worst person to ask about this because I hate picking favorites of anything because it's like they all have their purpose and their use case. So for storing value, my favorite coin is uh, Bitcoin. But for actually running a DAP, it's probably Ethereum, you know, if I want it to be secure. But for running a cheap DAP, you know, it might be smart chain i don't know you yeah. know so. and all you people thought i was gonna say chain link ah <laughs> i gotcha smart contracts may soon arrive on bitcoin blockchain through this integration details so this will be huge i mean we all you know this is where you'll get bitcoin nfts and stuff like that recent hmm. integration may usher in smart contracts on the bitcoin blockchain in a three-phase process internet icp is working on direct integration with the bitcoin blockchain Oh, geez. ICP. Oh, ICP. It's a blockchain computer that scales smart contract computation and data and runs them at web speed. It was launched by Definity into the public domain on May 10th, 2021. ICP, of course, you know, we saw that huge downtrend on it, you know, after it uh, uh, premiered on Coinbase. It currently, though, is still ranking as the 27th largest crypto for a coin market cap. Trades uh, right around 32 bucks. I think it was up in what, like 200 or something, right? Taking cues from Vitalik, who believes that the future will be multi-chain, but it will not be cross-chain. They state that direct integration is next-level cryptography. The first phase, uh, referred to as uh, the threshold, is a prerequisite for the BTC ICP direct integration for uh, both networks to talk as one. So you'll need a smart contract with the public key, then securely uh, sign and submit your transactions to the Bitcoin. And not only that, we also got a taproot upgrade. It's going to unlock some smart contract potential. Uh, we've talked about this, you know, over and over. So this activated November of last year. Still feels weird to say that. Mm-hmm. And the update sought to enable a greater transaction privacy and efficiency, and most importantly, unlock the potential for smart contracts. So we saw this with Ethereum, you know, the EIP 1559. It was like a lot of people just kind of had a narrative like, oh, ETH 2.0 is like happening now. And it's like, no, this is a multi-step process. We're talking about, you know, changing an entire network you know, almost on its head here. So this isn't just something you can flip a switch and expect it to work. 
I'm not a developer, you know, I'm not Ivan on tech. I'm not, you know, Richard. I, I can't sit here and tell you, you like, this is why you must do X before Y and you must do Y before Z and then Z before A. So I, I'm not going to, I don't, I don't know the technical details. I won't pretend to know the technical details. I just know there's very smart people working hard on these problems. And some of these problems, like if you can break, you know, the, the, the chain or some, you can make $50 million, a hundred million dollars, a billion dollars. So there's definitely incentive for people to try to, you know, hack a chain or hack a bridge. And, you know, a lot of times it won't happen. It doesn't happen. It'll run for years successfully. I'm not saying it won't happen in the future. I'm sure people are still trying. But when there's bounties of tens of millions, hundreds of millions, you can rest assured that, you know, people are doing their due diligence to make sure that something's safe. So it will be interesting to see uh, Bitcoin, you know, try to compete with Ethereum, with Ethereum, Cardano, Solana, uh, you know, all these things having such a large head start. But then again, they have the brand name of Bitcoin. So, you know, I'm, I'm pretty bullish on uh, Bitcoin. I, the developers will come out and they'll try to make it work. Jack Dorsey will try to do something with Square. So, you know, there, there will be, you know, people uh, working hard to make it a reality. Uh, what, do you, what do you think? I mean, do you think it compete with ETH? For smart contracts on Bitcoin? Uh, hmm. That's an interesting one. I think they, like you said, they will solve smart contracts on Bitcoin. They will be run in some capacity. Uh, I think the true maxis would say, you know, doing it through ICP is not necessarily smart contracts on Bitcoin. It's smart contracts on ICP just yep. interacting that, with Bitcoin, yeah. um, which will definitely happen. Other smart contract platform, you know, you, we see wrapped Bitcoin on Ethereum, things like that. Um, I think it'll happen. I think it'll take a long time. And I'm not sure what the development will look like once it does happen. But I think it's, like you said, it's inevitable that it will be created. It's just a matter of what type of smart contracts would you put on there versus other platforms. And they all are going to have their own specific use cases. So I imagine the most highest security contracts that need to be created maybe would be put on Bitcoin. But there'll be a much easier implementation on a lot of the other blockchains in my opinion yeah i mean i would definitely like to play some play to earn game where i'm earning bitcoin instead of you know a, a poop token sure i, I would like that I, I would like to uh you know i i host nft update of course i would you know i am interested in bitcoin nfts so you know uh, we'll, we'll keep an eye on it and uh, we'll, we'll see what direction it goes but let's talk a little uh joe rogan uh, he has a lot of hope for crypto the podcaster said crypto either fall apart completely, or we'll give society an opportunity to come up with a better way to live our lives. Hmm. I do want to say, uh, take this with a uh, grain of salt sometimes. Oh, this is the one with Adam Curry. I thought this was quotes from the Tim Dillon episode. So, you know, a lot of things may have been said as a joke, but it's estimated he gets about 11 million listeners per an episode, despite Spotify's attempts to censor some of the more offensive episodes. I would say that's a little inflammatory. He came on and they did remove a handful of episodes. However, they've kept up many controversial episodes that he has filmed recently that youtube is taking down the clips so i i would rather than uh chastise spotify for doing what they did when he first signed on i would like to applaud what they're doing and that's leaving up the uh the the two do i don't even want to say the name yeah. but the two doctors episodes of the past week or two uh again i'm not going to say the name but i do like uh, that rapper post malone but uh yeah I, I will say you know like that that is good to see that uh you know spotify is fighting for uh pro uh, freedom of speech and anti-censorship but curry is the host of the right-wing podcast no agenda has been criticized by mainstream me media and the medical community for uh promoting you know one of them theories that people don't like uh he has said there's a whole slew of young people who are just opting out and they're moving to build parallel systems and parallel networks for adding i'm on the bitcoin train because i believe my money is safer there i agree with that i saw it. i claimed eleven hundred dollars today why that is a parallel system and a parallel network so i mean this is we are seeing it now i was i was given eleven $1 hundred dollars today so i'm bullish on crypto as well and they are seeing these same things even though you know they they might have a, a little bit of a laser eyes on bitcoin at the moment you know crypto is changing lives and is doing a lot you know eleven $1 hundred dollars to someone you know in a third world country with a very low cost of living that is life-changing money and even people in this country, that could be life-changing money. You know, you have a car that needs to get fixed and you barely get to work. You know, this this can change your life. Uh, your kid needs food. Uh, you want to set aside something. You have your light bill about to cut off. So I'm not I'm not uh, minimizing the $1,100 here. Well, Rogan's need... vision for the metaverse. Uh, 
understand its possibilities of a Silicon Valley controlled digital metaverse and the potential role of uh, NFTs in the space. Uh, Rogan theorized a future where they will come up with their own digital tokens that customers would need to use to purchase their products. Apple could easily do that, Rogan said. You would buy coins, and then through those coins, you would buy products. It's almost like another version of stocks or something. Curry wasn't convinced, saying that's not the plan. And he expects powerful institutions, governments will instead set their sights on central bank uh, digital currencies. That is what we talked about here. The CBDC is going to get a lot of flack from the regulatory bodies. Why? Because it's competing with the legacy system much more than uh, a Doge trying to, you know, buy your AMC movie tickets with some Doge. Sure, that's competing with the legacy systems on some level, but they're competing with the legacy systems of billionaires and trillion dollar hedge funds and trillion dollar assets under management. That's what they're worried about. They don't care about you buying a cup of coffee with Doge. Sure, they care on some level, but what they really care about is, you know, this is where I started getting conspiratorial or something, but, you know, Goldman Sachs saying, hey, they're, you know, they're, they're taking a little piece of our pie, you know. They don't care about the small stuff. They care about their their donors essentially, you know, having some stiff competition. So the donors come out and say, "Yeah, we we can't let them get ten percent a year." Uh, was it Derek here? He found a place where they're doing twenty percent mm-hmm. on stable coins through. Uh, I think it was the Terra Luna, or it was. It was. Yep. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, this is competing with these legacy systems, and they don't want you know your grandpa to park his you know slow moving money into something that's fast and exciting that can you know change his life where. Oh, wait, you mean the income I get off my interest can actually now pay my bills? I'm not just watching my nest egg shrink and shrink and shrink. Now, if I actually stay below my interest payment, it's actually growing. You know, I'm actually reinvesting. And that's now I'm getting exponential growth on a long enough time scale. So that's what they don't like. That's what they're scared of. And uh, that's what's going to be, you know, getting those uh, lasers uh, from the from the Yellens and the, the Genslers and, uh, and such. All right. What else? We got the Matic journalism ooh, ooh little matic journalism ah journalism on that automatic associated press to launch nft marketplace on polygon to support journalism that's funny because all the uh articles i see say they boil oceans and kill rainforests but huh. that's interesting the ap that's why you got to do what they do not what they say they'll say something's bad and then you look at what they're doing they're Oh wait, Ray Dalio saying sell, but he's buying. Oh, that's that's weird, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jim Cramer saying it was a good buy, but you know, like his quarterly reports it doesn't indicate that. That's weird. All right, so the AP is launching its own photo NFT marketplace, which will feature Pulitzer Prize winning shots. But what about the right click savers? In brief, the Associated Press will launch photo NFT. It's coming out January thirty first. Amid the ongoing uh, frenzy of brands and companies entering the growing in- industry, AP's joining. Uh, I think it's actually a really good idea with the photo NFTs uh, set to launch in the month. It's going to have uh, digital as well as digitally enhanced depictions of photographers' work. It's a not uh, AP is a not for profit uh, news cooperative, and it's going to run on Polygon, uh, Polygon, which of course is the layer two solution for Ethereum. It gives you cheap transactions. People are saying. Oh, you know, that basically stops the environmental FUD. Like, oh, you, you know, you shouldn't have to use, a, a, you know, a, a month's worth of electricity of an apartment, you know, to, to make a picture on the blockchain. That doesn't do that. It does not do that. Okay, we're talking about pennies. Okay, maybe a dollar. Okay, you streaming Netflix on your 4K TV is doing more damage than, you know, minting this one picture. And at the end of the day, this is going to protect photographers. You know, this is going to, uh, you know, allow them to make sure that, it helps verify their work so they don't get ripped off. Quick story on this. on I was on Twitter, and a Magic the Gathering artist, that community, uh, he found pictures of that he had done on OpenSea. And he said, this is why NFTs are a scam. You know, someone found my work and they minted them. I looked at it. I checked the sales data. He did it on Polygon and not one single piece of artwork sold. So really, it, what he's blaming NFTs, but really it's the scammer. If someone stole the Magic the Gathering artwork and put it on t-shirts and sold it on Amazon, would you blame Jeff Bezos for being the scammer there? Is it Jeff Bezos' fault? You know, say you report it and it is taken down. It's not Jeff's fault, okay? As much as we like to, you know, it's easy to dunk on the guy because he's taking yacht pictures. I ain't taking yacht pictures. Are you taking yacht pictures? I ain't trying to dunk on the guy. But, you know, we, we see it now and the NFT, it's not, scams are everywhere. 
It's like saying, uh, you know, cash is a scam because someone, you know, bought, you know, something in an alleyway, some downtown metropolis. You wouldn't say all cash is a scam. <gasps> you use cash to buy that McDonald's? Don't you know cash is a scam? So that's that's what I hear when people say like NFTs are a scam because of X, Y, Z. But real quick, uh, the initial drops will be spread out over a series of weeks. Uh, it's going to focus on topics such as war, climate, space. Uh, you're going to have some famous photographers. And of course, because these are NFTs, they are going to have detailed metadata or stored information about the shot in question, which I think is pretty cool. So we'll have the date, the time, the location of each photo along. This is for you nerds out there. Bobby, uh, BJ, I'm talking to you, along with the equipment and camera settings used to capture the image. Mm. And they don't really go into it, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised if we see a little bit of rev share uh, where, you know, the more you use it, uh, we see it on the blockchain. And then the photographer, if it's used in 100 newspapers, well, he's going to get more money versus, you know, you just sell it to somebody, then it's just gone forever and you don't get any extra money. So, yeah, I, I think AP, blockchain, uh, the pictures, I think it's a slam dunk, man. What, what are your thoughts? Yeah, no, I agree. This is something we've talked about for a long time with NFTs. I mean, essentially, it's making it easier to monetize your intellectual property, whether it's a photo or yep. video or no matter what it is on the internet. We've seen things like uh, Adobe Stock and Getty Images and a lot of these image platforms where people license photos and videos and all sorts of different stuff to use and cite in their articles later. And then the uh, photographer, artist, whatever it is, they've usually sold it for an upfront cost, where with this, you could mint your ip on the blockchain basically yeah. and then if anybody uses it license it you get paid over time like you just mentioned so this is definitely going to happen whether it's this project or another one this is uh will be the way of monetizing ip in the future no matter what i agree i agree and uh she's uh there's a lot of uh nft news y'all got some hot takes on nfts i see some of you like particular cardano projects i'm not trying to pump anything here but if you do like Cardano NFTs, if you like NFTs, period, go ahead and hit that like button. How about this, though? If you don't care for NFTs, hit the like button anyways, and then we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out afterwards which one you're on. All right, uh, let's see. Let's talk a little Cosmos here. Cosmos hey. pumping. Hey, you like some Cosmos? You like some Adam? I do. You like some Adam, you know, versus Adam and Eve. All right. <laughs> Near Cosmos defy altcoin plunge with a price surge. Tokens of the layer one blockchains were as up as much as 25% while the broader market was taking a beating of a lifetime. Tokens of Near and Adam were among the only gainers among the major cryptos in the last 24 hours. Uh, they have almost doubled in the past month right there. Look at that. Good job. Amid increased interest of the layer ones. Uh, of course, layer one refers to a blockchain platform such as Ethereum or Avalanche over which developers can deploy their applications. I like to say dApps or services. Near posted gains as much as 25% from Monday's low. Uh, prices are down about 6% from last week's high right there. Protocol uh, near gain favor among investors as a layer one play. It was the third largest crypto ecosystem by developer activity. A report from crypto venture firm Electric Capital said last week. I want I'm quote uh, you know if I'm wrong please correct me. I want to say Ethereum's number one, Solana's number two, and I think that was a lightning or something or something's going up. You heard yeah, a boom. Don't worry, we're still safe. We're yeah. Still safe there. All right, Adam, however, had gained as much as eight percent to go. Uh, right up at $40 at 3933 over the last 24 hours before a brief sell-off saw it lose about 35 cents at the time of writing. Prices were as low as $32 on Monday. So look at 32240 I mean, you're looking at, yeah, but around a 25% gain right there. The tokens are trading around a resistance turn support level of 37 at the time of the writing with the prominent buying zone uh, until the $30 level if historic price action is considered. I mean, you know, this, that's for you TA people to, uh, you know, argue over. Is that a support level? Is that a, you know, a metric that matters there? Uh, they say, you know, EVM, uh, of course, stands for Ethereum Virtual Machine. That's part of the Ethereum that executes the blockchain's rules and makes sure a submitted transaction or smart contract follows them. I always like it when people talk about Ethereum Virtual Machine because it's either the most efficient computer in mankind or it's the least efficient computer in mankind. And you'll really rarely see people, you know, like kind of have a nuanced take. It's kind of camp A or camp B. Do you have any uh, dog in that fight? Uh, I tend to be, I guess, camp A, that it is the most efficient and, you know, basically the most capable computer we've ever created, you know, through the idea of blockchain and mining and all that sort of thing. 
uh the i assume the other side has to do with the uh transactional throughput <laughs> yeah well it, you you know you the, the person that says that will love Cardano or I love see. Solana or you know, love yeah. Avalanche. And I would say for those, we're just untested. So they, there could be potentially better uh, solutions that have been created. We just haven't seen them play out yet. Yeah. No, but, you know, time will tell. Time will tell. Uh, all right. It is time to talk crypto drones. I don't want to be alarmist, but I think drone warfare will be a hot button issue oh, yeah. over the next 10 years. We just haven't seen... I shouldn't even say this, but like eventually there probably will be some sort of an effective use of it for nefarious purposes. I think I parsed the words there carefully, but when that happens, it's all people are going to talk about similar to a uh, that tragic incident that happened in uh, 2001. But Hedera Hashgraph partnered with UK air traffic company to mm. track the drones. UK government has backed Hedera and Neuron Innovation as the duo conducted a, a trial on the drone data collation and storage using uh, using public ledger consensus. Neuron Innovation is a London-based aviation company. They are collecting the drone data collection trial sponsored by the government of the United Kingdom. And uh, it was made possible using the ledger consensus of Hedera. Now this collaboration between Hedera and Neuron are enabling the uh, collation, storage, and ordering of millions of data points connected to the drone flights. The essence of aviation as a service protocol is to allow drones to join existing air traffic seamlessly. That is one thing I have not thought about blockchain technology is air traffic control. Mm -hmm. And you think about it, you know, we are using computers, but geez, you know, like that would be a little bit better to have like an immutable record of it. Of course you would need, you know, fast uh, transaction times. Uh, you need blocks, you know, like quick block. Uh, what are we looking at? Three, three seconds? Probably. Probably. Probably faster than that. I would think you would probably be looking for maybe. Well, probably, I'm thinking it takes so it's so hard to move the momentum of a right. plane. Like maybe three seconds is enough. I, I don't know. Oh, because, I was you know, the bigger the bow, the harder yeah. it is to turn around. I was thinking for drones, not. For oh, planes. for drones. Yeah, that is a very good point. You will need it faster for drones because they yeah. can, zzz, zzz, and then right. you know just reverse one eighty. You know off the yeah. So yeah, it, that is uh, going to be interesting. Yeah, I could I could definitely see this a huge huge boon for uh, blockchain. Collaboration between the two parties had neuron sensors record flight paths of the drone and their location data. At the same time, the Hedera uh, blockchain consensus played a critical role in creating the timestamps of the data collected from each drone and having them recorded on a decentralized public ledger. This is one of several drone-related programs backed by the UK Department for Business, Energy, and Industrial Strategy. The ideas develop a foolproof process of tracking and following drones as well as other unmanned aircraft after their flights have taken them off view. So Hedera is a blockchain network that uh, works on the proof of stake consensus. It's a Hedera's consensus service, uses proof of concept to determine the feasibility of the occurrence of a concept. These are the coins that I like to get excited about. Mm -hmm. You don't see influencers shilling them. You don't see, you know, oh, you know, memes being made of like a, a someone on a rocket ship and their face is like the coin logo and they're like, Ooh, to the moon. Sure, that's cool for, you know, quick price action. But stuff like this is where you see long-term yeah. accumulation. That's where you'll see a price action of like a Matic, where you mm. see, a, you know, this is where you get your 1,000 Xs. 1,000, sorry, 1,000% thousand gains. Yes. This is where you get your 10 Xs. This is where you get your 20 Xs. It might be slow and boring on the way there. Then, boom, it's going to happen. It's going to happen quickly. I like to bring up the example of, I remember Solana, you know, I was a buyer at 20. I remember it pumped to 40. I think it was Decker. I think it was Decker. And I said, man, I got to get some more Solana. I'm really into Solana NFTs. I was jumping on them kind of early. And I said, but it just spiked to 40 bucks, man. I was like, you know, I, I'm spending a hundred bucks. Yeah, DZ's poor. And so I spent a hundred. I got two and a half Solana. And, you know, a week ago, it would have been five. And I remember being like, oh, man, you know, two and a half is probably going to go down, but I'm spending on NFTs. It went to a hundred dollars. Like a week later, it was a hundred dollars. Fast forward a month, it was two hundred dollars. So like it, it was a slow and steady and then boom, all of a sudden it's not slow and steady and it's not boring. And that's what I would predict with a Hedera Hashgraph. Now, maybe a competitor blows them out of the water. Maybe America and China uses a different blockchain for this same technology. You know, maybe it doesn't work. But stuff like this, you know, this is what makes me bullish on, you know, a, a Hedera Hashgraph. So, you yeah. know, that's just my two cents. I mean, would you echo those sentiments? Yeah. No, I was going to say something similar. I, you know, you hear us talk about Hedera, Algo is another one we talk yep. about a lot that we say we really like the tech and the fundamentals. We think it's a good long-term project, but you don't 
like you were mentioning, hear a lot of hype stories mentioned about it. And then even something like this, like it is huge. It all air traffic will be run on an operated on a blockchain at some point. Maybe it's Hedera, maybe it's not. But these are the type of stories that come through. We'll we'll talk about it today. Maybe nothing else gets mentioned of it for another six months, eight months, a year, could be two years. But when it is happening, it, it is in a huge uh, use case for Hedera that's going to keep it around for a long time, which is part of why we like it. And it'll grow over time. And they're not trying to get out there and be aggressive with the marketing, talk about really sexy stuff to pump the price. They're yeah. just going to keep doing what they're doing and let the tech speak for itself. So, yeah, GRT, Quant, yep. HBAR, AMP. You know, I, I would kind of put all of those in that category. Yeah, actually, strong so. tech, low marketing. And sometimes that's a sometimes that's a winning formula. Sometimes it's not. You know, sometimes yeah. it's all about survival in crypto that and diversification. That's yeah. when you want to spread out. But I think that's all we got time for. And mm -hmm. uh, believe it or not, sometimes we are in it for the tech. And that's all we got this one. Yeah.